Number 10. World War II Plane Wreck At the bottom of the sea near the state of Koror in the Republic of Palau, there's a remarkably intact Japanese Aichi E-13A World War II era aircraft. The U.S. Army shot down the plane in 1944. Images of the plane lying peacefully in its watery grave circulated on social media several years ago, sparking discussion about how it's hard to believe that a place as serene as Palau was once a war zone. The Aichi E-13A was a reconnaissance aircraft that was used from 1941 to 1945. It was designed to carry three crew members and could hold up to 550 pounds of bombs. Over 1,400 of the seaplanes were manufactured during the war, but there are no known surviving airworthy examples. Many, like the one in Koror, can be found underwater. The sunken wreck has been reclaimed by nature and is now home to moss, coral, and other sea life. It's a popular tourist site and can be reached with proper scuba diving equipment. Number 9. Boiling River Geophysicist Andres Ruzo first heard of a boiling Amazonian river called Shanai Timpishka as a child from his grandfather. To find out if the fabled river really exists, he traveled deep into the Peruvian jungle to investigate and found what he was looking for. Ruzo told National Geographic that the 5.5-mile, 9-kilometer river, which reaches 16 feet deep in some places, starts off as a cold stream. The lower 3.8 miles constitute the hot portion, with temperatures ranging between 80.6 degrees to 201.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 27 to 94 degrees Celsius. Most of that flow, particularly during the dry season, is hot enough to kill you, Russo explained. Small mammals, reptiles, or amphibians regularly fall in and are boiled alive. The boiling river is a non-volcanic geothermal feature, in other words, a stream of extremely hot water that flows at very fast rates from deep within the earth. The discovery came as good news to Russo, who suspected that the boiling river may have resulted from a nearby oil field accident rupturing a local geothermal system. Locals who have long known about the Boiling River consider it a sacred place and believe its waters have healing powers. A shaman from the nearby town of Mayan Tuyaku guards the river and grants permission to those seeking to explore it. All things considered, it's good that someone keeps an eye on the river. After all, if someone fell in, they'd instantly be covered in third-degree burns, and even the mud is too hot to walk in in some spots. Number 8. Humpback Whale in early 2019, local fishermen on the Brazilian island of Marajo, near the mouth of the Amazon River, discovered a 26-foot, 8 meters baby humpback whale carcass in the middle of a mangrove forest. The unfortunate creature probably became lost at sea and died of starvation or some other unknown cause, according to a non-profit research group, Bicho da Agua. But how did it end up in the middle of the jungle? Speaking with CNN, oceanographer Maura Sousa explained that during that time of year, the tide rises twice daily by 13 feet, nearly 4 meters, and floods the mangrove forest. This is what washed the whale's body ashore at Arauna Beach in the city of Suur, then carried it inland about 50 feet, 15 meters from shore. Sousa said that the whale probably died 4 to 5 days before being swept to its final resting place. She added that while humpback whales are common in the South Atlantic, this one appeared at an unusual time of year, and it may have even come from the North Atlantic. At the time the discovery was announced, researchers said that they hoped a necropsy and DNA test would provide more insight into where it came from and how it died. Number 7. A Hidden Rainforest Sometimes it's not what you find inside the jungle, but the jungle itself that qualifies as a crazy discovery. This is certainly the case in recent years when scientists discovered a virtually untouched rainforest on Mount Liko, an isolated 410-foot, 125-meters cratered mountain, or Inselberg, in northern Mozambique. Welsh ecologist and conservation scientist Dr. Julian Bayliss originally spotted the site on Google Earth in 2012. Five years later, in 2017, he used a drone to ascend the mountain and visually confirmed that there's an isolated rainforest on top. It's difficult enough to reach the base of Mount Liko, which is in an area fraught with difficult terrain, river crossings, and thick vegetation, with no paved roads or hostels. But accessing the rainforest seemed impossible to Bayliss and the 28-person team he led on a quest to see it for themselves. With help from two of the world's top climbers, the researchers scaled Mount Liko and found themselves in a world virtually untouched and unseen by humans. They saw very few birds, but plenty of spiders, butterflies, and rodents. Locals later told the team that the only other humans who had ventured on top of Mount Liko were some Germans during World War I. It's rumored that the men died, and if that's the case, they have likely decomposed past the point of being recognizable as human beings. 
There are stories about the Abatwa tribe of small statured people who supposedly once lived up on Mount Liko, but so far these tales appear to be mythical. By studying the plant and animal life they observed at the undisturbed site, the researchers can learn more about how climate change and human activity have affected other parts of the Earth that were once pristine. And they can also learn how to best preserve the few places left on the planet that we haven't damaged. Number 6. An Airplane Hotel Deep in Costa Rica's Manuel Antonio National Park, there's a Boeing 727 that you may assume at first glance crashed into the jungle and was left there to be reclaimed by nature. But the aircraft is too good of a condition for it to be a wreck. Built in 1965, the plane flew for South Africa Air and Colombia-based Avianca Airlines before being salvaged from the San Jose International Airport in Alajuela, Costa Rica and refurbished into a hotel. Now it's a home away from home for adventurous off-the-beaten-path travelers who want something other than the conventional vacation experience. Although it's a vintage hotel in one sense, the plane's interior is modern. It's fully air-conditioned with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchenette and dining area, a spiral staircase leading to the entrance, has a wooden deck where the right wing once was, and is surrounded by gardens. Getting the 727 into the jungle was no easy task. It was transported in five truckloads, and once the frame reached its destination, it was reassembled atop a 50-foot pedestal, where it sits high enough for guests to enjoy ocean and jungle views. Visitors have even spotted sloths, toucans, monkeys, and other animals from the terrace. Number 5. A Missing Soldier World War II ended in 1945 when Japan surrendered to the Allied forces. But one Japanese intelligence officer named Hiru Onoda simply refused to believe that the conflict was over. Originally hailing from Wakayama Prefecture, Onoda spent the next three decades in the jungle on the Philippine island of Lubang, relying on his guerrilla warfare skills to stay hidden and avoid capture. He was originally joined by three comrades, one of whom left the jungle and returned to Japan in 1950. One of Onoda's two remaining companions died the same year, and the other survived until 1972. Onoda was the last Japanese soldier to come out of hiding and surrender in 1974 when his brother and former commanding officer traveled to Lubang and coaxed him out of the woods. Finally, after numerous failed attempts by government officials, someone had convinced the dedicated soldier that the war had ended. Still wearing his Imperial Army uniform, cap, and sword, which were in remarkably good condition for having been in the jungle for three decades, Onoda formally surrendered to Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos. Marcos pardoned Onoda for killing as many as 30 people he mistakenly took for enemy soldiers throughout his years spent in hiding. In a later interview, Onoda explained that he believed Tokyo's pro-U.S. government was scheming against him in their previous attempts to persuade him off the island. He moved to Brazil and became a farmer for a decade before moving back to Japan, where he created nature camps for children. Onoda passed away in 2014 at the age of 91. Number 4. World War II Hideout in 2015, archaeologists from the University of Buenos Aires announced the discovery of what they believe to be a German World War II-era hideout nestled in the thick vegetation of Argentina's Teucuare National Park, which is in the northeastern province of Misiones. Located near the Paraguay border, the site has long been associated with legends of secretive German occupation. Evidence of this was finally unearthed thanks to the archaeological team, who found fragments of a German-made plate at the site along with five German coins minted between 1938 and 1941. The alleged bunker consists of a normal house big enough to accommodate six to eight families and is surrounded by 10-foot, three-meter thick walls and a hilltop tower. It's in an extremely remote location that would have been especially difficult to access and even harder to survive in. Argentina welcomed Germans from the end of World War II until 1955. Their post-war presence in the country numbered at least 5,000 according to records in Chile and Brazil that were uncovered in 2012. But most of them lived in cities and on ranches, not in secret bunkers, suggesting that the clandestine refuge was there before Germans began migrating to South America in larger numbers. Skeptics deny this possibility, instead arguing that the structure may be a failed homestead or a refuge that was built and used by non-Germans, but that it was advertised as a German hideout to attract tourists. Number 3. The Lost White City For centuries, indigenous locals who live in the Mosquita rainforest in Honduras spoke of a legendary white city, also called the City of the Monkey God. But physical evidence of such a place was lacking until 2012 when an overhead aerial survey detected its ruins. Archaeologists physically explored the ancient city for the first time in 2015. During their visit, they mapped the site's plazas, earthen mounds, and pyramids and other structures. 
The team also found a collection of stone sculptures that hadn't been touched since the settlement was abandoned 1,000 years ago, and several other artifacts that they believe date back to between 1,000 and 1,400 AD. The cache of stone sculptures may have been an offering of some sort, according to Mesoamerican archaeologist Christopher Fisher, who told National Geographic that it's incredibly rare to find artifacts like these in such an undisturbed, pristine state. One artifact resembles a strange hybrid animal that could probably best be described as a were-jaguar in Fisher's words. The team documented their findings but left the site unexcavated and are not disclosing its exact location in order to protect it from looters. The mysterious culture that inhabited the White City vanished unexplainably. Little is known about this society, including what they called themselves, and the region that they once lived in is one of the least scientifically explored places on Earth. The discoveries made in recent years, along with further exploration, will hopefully get researchers one step closer to uncovering the secrets of the Eden-like paradise that is so frequently mentioned in local folklore. Number 2. The World's Oldest Ecosystem Located on the northeast coast of Queensland, Australia, the Dane Tree Rainforest is part of the wet tropics of Queensland Rainforest. At an estimated 180 million years old, it's the world's oldest rainforest and is tens of millions of years older than the Amazon Rainforest. The Dane Tree Rainforest formed when Australia was much more humid than it is now, and it once extended into areas that are now infamously dry, such as the Uluru region. As Australia becomes more arid, the rainforest shrunk to its current size and location. Tens of thousands of bird and other wildlife species live here, including 30% of Australia's frog, reptile, and marsupial species, 65% of its bats and butterflies, and over 12,000 different types of insects, according to the Dane Tree Discovery Center. Many of the animals here are largely unchanged from their ancestors, retaining primitive traits that date back up to 110 million years. In addition to being a natural wonder, the Dane Tree Rainforest is a significant cultural and spiritual site for the Kuku Yalanji people, who have lived in the area for thousands of years and relied on the plants and animals for food. Since then, the region has attracted curious tourists and scientists. One of the most noteworthy discoveries made in the Dane Tree Rainforest is the 120 million year old idiot fruit, Idiospermum australiensi species, one of the world's rarest and most primitive lineages of flowering plants. Modern efforts are focused on expanding scientific research and conserving this delicate ecosystem for future generations to enjoy. Number 1. Amazon Rings A shocking 2014 study revealed that several ditches throughout the Bolivian and Brazilian Amazon were there before thick vegetation grew over them and concealed them. The square, straight, and ring-like formations are human-made, but their purpose and who built them remain a mystery. Their presence also begs the question of how prehistoric people changed the Amazonian landscape before Europeans arrived. Researchers believe the ditches were possibly ceremonial or religious in nature, or that they may have had practical uses such as defense or drainage. These findings challenge the previously held theory that indigenous people barely altered the landscapes they lived among before moving on to another area. In the 1980s, deforestation began revealing quite literally the flaws in this thinking. The ditches, which are up to 16 feet, 5 meters deep, and just nearly as wide, have brought to light a new controversy between experts. Whether there were slash and burn operations that were abandoned and became overgrown, or if the pre-Columbian people who created the ditches did little else to alter the environment. Sediment samples from northeastern Bolivia revealed that until a few thousand years ago, parts of the Amazon more closely resembled the African savanna than its current jungle habitat. Drought-resistant species, including evergreens and pollen, increasingly appeared in the samples starting around 2,000 years ago. Charcoal levels simultaneously decreased, making the environment less prone to wildfires. Based on these findings, it appears that the area's early inhabitants dug these mysterious ditches before the forest grew around them. Number 10. Dwarf Submarines Hidden at a dry dock in Japan at the Kure Naval Base, there's a collection of decommissioned dwarf submarines that have been abandoned since 1945. Secreted at this forgotten base, there are four different kinds of dwarf submarines and a total of roughly 84 boats. A dwarf submarine is technically any submarine under 150 tons with a crew of less than eight and absolutely no living accommodation on board. Dwarf submarines also operate with their mothership by providing support. There were seven classes of dwarf submarines built by the Japanese Navy before the end of World War II, with about 800 units being manufactured. Oddly enough, these miniature subs didn't have much impact on the war effort. They were supposed to be deployed at the forefront of enemy fleets to attack harbors and to defend the Japanese coast. 
But they didn't end up doing a whole lot, and at the end of the war in 1945, the Americans found hundreds sitting at dry docks in Japan and even more still under construction. The Japanese were also working to build more effective dwarf submarines that could do increased damage. The surprising part of this discovery is that the dwarf submarines are still around today. The Kure naval base was heavily damaged in October of 1945 and flooded, but nobody's ever bothered to take the submarines away or to even destroy the old base. They can still be found there as we speak, completely useless and slowly rotting away. Number 9. Jewelry in the Belly a collection of stolen jewelry was recently discovered in a rather surprising place. It happened in Florida back in December when a young man named Joseph Bravos Ramos was arrested for reckless driving. After getting arrested, the police found out the car didn't even belong to Joseph. The vehicle was stolen, and so now the kid was being charged with theft. Joseph was taken to jail, at which point he was forced to move through the security x-ray. This turned out to be bad news for Joseph, as he had some stolen goods hidden inside of his stomach. Police noticed a large black mass in his gut, but Joseph acted as though it were completely normal. It wasn't until later that the police found out he had two gold chains lumped in his stomach. Apparently, Joseph swallowed the stolen jewelry because he didn't want to get busted with it. But seeing as he was in jail and not going anywhere, it wasn't like he could just keep the gold chains in his guts forever. The police forced this guy into surgery and the stolen property was removed. To add insult to injury, Joseph was also charged with tampering with evidence. Number 8. Too Many Webs In Australia, the spiders are taking over. A terrifying and surprising discovery was made in the Gippsland region in Victoria after the place was hit by brutal floods. The floodwaters clogged the soil where spiders live and forced them out of their homes. For the spiders to stay dry and alive, they used their silk to create a stunning roadway of webs nearly five feet off the ground and stretching for yard after yard. For local residents, it was not a great thing to see. Nobody wants to walk through spider webs up to their waist that are several feet thick and literally filled with spiders. Here's where things get really horrifying. According to the experts, this act of literally blanketing the countryside in webs is not that abnormal. Spiders are around us constantly, but we don't really see them. They hide inside the soil, in the grass, and right under our feet. So when a great flooding event happens, they need a way to evacuate the grass. This means thousands upon thousands of spiders release strands of web, which then get caught in the wind and connect onto things like trees, bushes, road signs, and even the sides of houses. The spider then uses that strand of web to climb up and away from the flooding. The act of doing this is actually called ballooning, and it's what spider babies do as soon as they hatch from their egg sacs. They fling a web strand away from the rest of the babies as quickly as possible and follow it wherever it goes. But this time in Australia, the really horrible part was that the thousands of spiders were all hanging out in the same spot, and the trees and shrubs were literally untouchable under veils of web. Would this freak you out? Are you afraid of spiders? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. Number 7. An Ancient Mine Archaeologists have made a surprising discovery in Mexico. Archaeologists with diving equipment found a mine that dates back 11,000 years inside of a flooded Mexican cave system. This shocking discovery has given us a spectacular glimpse into the lives of the ancient people who first lived on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. 11,000 years ago, the cave systems here would not have been filled with water. The true mystery of the Yucatan is that the Maya, and even those ancient people who came long before the Maya, used the cave systems extensively. It wasn't just tourists in bikinis diving into cenotes. There were all kinds of things happening here, and apparently the natives were mining. Archaeologists found the mining site preserved in stunning detail. The ancient people had used tools made of stone to mine red ochre pigment from deep within the earth. The pigments would have been used in cave paintings, rituals, for sunscreen, in dyes for clothing, and so much more. And this isn't the only surprising thing archaeologists have found inside the vast cave systems. They also found the skeleton of a very ancient young girl who lived 13,000 years ago and fell to her death inside another nearby cave. Then there are other caves where divers have also found human remains preserved by the floodwaters for at least 8,000 years. Unfortunately, scientists still debate what people were doing inside the dark underworld of the caves, if they were trying to live there, if they used the caves to bury their dead, or if they simply mined the earthly minerals. Number 6. Space Rock a man in Indonesia named Joshua Hutagalung made such a surprising discovery that he was able to retire from his business of making coffins. He literally became an instant millionaire when a rock from space crashed through his roof. 
He didn't need a metal detector, a degree from a fancy school. He didn't need a single thing. The space rock literally punched a hole in his roof and landed in his living room. Where did the space rock come from? Well, from space. It was a meteorite the size of a football, and it's been dated back at 4.5 billion years old. This is one of the most significant meteorites ever found, and could contain elements that prove extraterrestrial life, or at least the origin of life on our planet. How did Joshua become a millionaire? Because the space rock was so valuable, he managed to sell it for roughly $1.5 million. That's the equivalent of 30 years of working every single day, and he made it all at once just because his house happened to be where the meteorite decided to fall out of the sky. Number 5. Old Human Footprints In Spain, some of the oldest footprints ever discovered were found inside of a mysterious cave. The footprints are at the Sala y Galerías de la Huella site, at the entrance to the Palomera Cave. The footprints were left behind by a group of people 4,500 years ago. What's truly fascinating is that the surprising footprints show the physical remains of human traffic during prehistory. The footprints are nothing more than indentations on the floor of the cave, and yet they speak volumes. First of all, the people who left the prints were not wearing shoes. They were barefoot. Also, the footprints belonged to a group of around 10 individuals who explored the tunnels within the cave. In total, archaeologists have isolated 1,200 individual human footprints. While it's true that the majority of the footprints were from the group 4,500 years ago, there are other separated footprints that date back as far as 19,000 years ago. What this suggests is that the cave was a popular destination for early humans through a span of at least 15,000 years. There are almost 100 miles of tunnels here, with evidence of early human habitation. This discovery brings a whole new truth to the term caveman. Number 4. Shipwreck Artifacts Underwater archaeologists have made a surprising discovery off the coast of Sicily. They found artifacts from a shipwreck, but this was not any ordinary wrecked naval vessel. Instead, the artifacts here date back 2,000 years and were used in one of the first epic naval battles ever. Some of the artifacts include helmets, armor, and weapons. The vessel was from the Battle of the Agati Islands. The battle was fought during the Punic War in 241 between the Romans and the Carthaginians. The battle was the result of over 20 years of fighting while the ambitious Romans tried to secure a foothold and complete dominance over the Mediterranean Sea. Even though Carthage had the advantage when it came to the water, the Romans were a bit more clever. They set up an ambush and sank a huge number of ships from Carthage, about 50 of them, and killing up to 10,000 men. This was the first major victory in the road to Rome's total European domination. Nobody knows the name of the vessel discovered, but archaeologists are certain it was involved in the battle. The artifacts were found 328 feet beneath the surface, scattered around an area of around 3 miles. Archaeologists found a naval ram used for battering boats, Roman helmets, and even iron swords. Number 3. Super Armored Worms A creepy and surprising new animal has just been discovered, and it dates back 500 million years. It's a type of worm, but it's not like any worm you've ever seen before. It's a spiky worm covered with armor and jagged points. According to the Archaeology News Network, it could be one of the first animals on the planet that developed armor as a form of protection. This bizarre worm would have lived underwater. It had front legs that looked like feathers, and it ate by filtering nutrients out of the water. It lived during the Cambrian explosion in what is today China. It's been given the name Colonicium ciliosum, or more simply, the Harry Collins monster. But even more surprising than the existence of the worm half a billion years ago is that it's actually related to things that are still alive today. It's a very distant early ancestor of the velvet worm, a squishy animal that lives in tropical forests all around our planet. Velvet worms also have legs, but for some unknown reason, they don't have armor or spikes anymore. The Harry Collins monster also had a squishy body. It had six pairs of legs with claws on the ends. It probably lived a meager existence by attaching itself to sea sponges, filtering nutrients out of the water, and hoping its armored spikes would keep other animals from eating it. How many spikes did the creepy worm have? Scientists believe it had 72 pointy spikes that covered most of its body, leaving it very well protected considering its sedentary lifestyle. Number 2. An Ancient Coin A soldier was participating in a military exercise on the remote Mount Carmel in Israel when he discovered something strange in the dirt. The soldier saw something shiny and metallic on the ground and picked it up. He would find out later that he had stumbled upon a very ancient and very rare coin with the head of an old Roman emperor on it. The coin dates back to about 159 AD, and the head on the coin is that of Emperor Antonius Pius, who ruled between 138 and 161. On the other side of the coin is the depiction of the Syrian moon god. 
According to archaeologist Dr. Avner Ecker, who investigated the coin after its discovery, it was minted in the ancient city of Geva Filippi, also known as the City of Horsemen because of the legendary cavalry force once stationed there. The coin was minted at a time when the Roman Empire allowed the city to govern itself under Roman thumb and to produce their own currency. Nobody's really sure how the coin made it onto the mountain or why nobody spotted it for 2,000 years, but it was definitely a pretty rewarding and surprising discovery for the soldier. He didn't get any money for it, but he was still happy. Number 1. Electric Eel Pack Animals In a shocking new discovery, no pun intended, scientists have discovered that electric eels may be very similar to wolves. On the face of it, electric eels and wolves don't really seem like animals that would have anything in common. I don't need to explain the differences to you. But scientists studying a new species of eel in South America with the devastating power to deliver 860 volts of electricity, enough to kill a fully grown person, have found these animals actually hunt in packs. Unlike most fish, electric eels are part of a strange social system that allows them to hunt together for better results. Douglas Bastos, a biologist working with the National Institute of Amazonian Research, said he was shocked by the discovery. Again, no pun intended. He first saw a group of electric eels attack together back in 2012, singling out fish and then attacking in an organized fashion. Even stranger is that the eels are almost always alone at the bottom of the river. It's only at dawn and dusk that they get together in packs to hunt down and kill any easy prey they find. Scientists aren't sure how electric eels developed such a social system, but some believe it could have something to do with their power over electricity. It could be that the eels use their electric discharge not only to navigate through the water, but also to communicate with one another in a way that we can't even imagine. Number 10. Woman Gives Birth to Rabbits In September of 1726, a woman allegedly gave birth to rabbits. Her name was Mary Toft and she lived in England. She was only 25 years old at the time, an illiterate servant married to a man named Joshua. She had suffered a miscarriage a month earlier, yet continued to look as though she had a baby inside her belly. Then one day she went into labor, and instead of a baby coming out of her, it was a creature described as a rabbit. In horror, the family called an obstetrician. By the time he arrived the next day, Mary had given birth to random animal parts through the night. And when the obstetrician got there, she kept birthing more and more animal parts. According to the story, she birthed a rabbit's head, then the leg of a cat, and finally nine dead baby rabbits. Somehow, the case of Mary and her rabbits reached the ear of King George. He sent investigators to see what they could find out about this strange case, and they were apparently shocked when they arrived and discovered she was still giving birth to rabbits, more of them already dead. The king's doctors checked the rabbits and discovered they probably had not developed inside of Mary's womb. But in the end, nobody could figure out how the rabbits were coming out of her, or if she had somehow faked the births, and just how she managed to do it. This is both creepy and magical, but mostly just creepy. If she did fake it, she was quite convincing. Number 9. Scratch your way out. In 2018 in Brazil, a woman was buried by mistake. She was still alive when they put her in the casket and nailed it shut. According to the New Zealand Herald, this poor woman spent 11 days awake inside her coffin, scratching at the lid and trying to fight her way out. The woman's name was Rosangela Almeida dos Santos, 37 years old. Nearly two weeks after being entombed, locals began hearing screams coming from her burial. By the time family members arrived and smashed the coffin open, they found scratch marks and blood on the wood on the inside of her casket. She had clearly been trying to get out from the inside, an impossible and horrifying task that didn't work out and a terrible way to die. After she was dug up, an ambulance was called because the woman still had warm skin. She was taken to the hospital, declared dead, then buried for good the next day. Number 8. Falcon Lake Incident the Falcon Lake incident is the best and most reliable UFO case in all of Canadian history. It's also insanely creepy. It happened in 1967 when Stan McCulloch's father came stumbling into the house sick and injured after an incident had occurred in the Falcon Lake woods in Manitoba. Stan was only nine years old at the time, but can still remember everything that happened. His father immediately went to bed after getting home, looking pale and sick. He also stank like sulfur and burnt motor oil. It was leaking out of his pores. Something had happened to Stan's dad in the woods, and the story of it is unbelievable. Stefan Mikulik was out in the wilderness exploring when he witnessed two objects hovering in the sky about 150 feet, 46 meters above his head. The objects were shaped like cigars and were glowing red. One of them descended, landed nearby, and then turned into more of a disc shape. The other one flew off. 
At first, Stefan thought the UFO was some kind of experimental military aircraft, so he went to check it out. According to his own testimony, the craft had an open door and bright lights pouring out from within. There were also voices inside the craft, but when Stefan called out to whoever was inside, the voices went quiet. The open door with the bright light flowing out of it immediately sealed, and the craft lifted off the ground, blasting Stefan backwards and lighting his clothes on fire. By the time Stefan got home, he was extremely sick and stayed sick for weeks, suffering diarrhea, blackouts, and uncontrollable weight loss. The question still remains today. What exactly did Stefan see in the woods of Falcon Lake? Number 7. The Avanos Hair Museum The Avanos Hair Museum is one of the creepiest museums in the entire world. The museum is in Avanos, a small town in Turkey. It has a history dating back thousands of years, though the hair museum is significantly newer. It's not really a museum in the traditional sense. Instead, it's more of a display house, seeing as there are thousands of locks of hair decorating the walls and ceiling. Who does the hair belong to? Only women, and all from the female visitors who have gone to the museum. The story behind why hair is decorating the walls is a little strange. A local potter in the city was saying goodbye to a beloved friend when he asked if she could leave him with a piece of her hair to remember her by. The potter put it in his shop. Other women in the city found out about the story, and they too wanted to donate their hair to the potter. As insane as that is, by 1979 there was enough hair in this guy's shop to turn it into a museum. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, there are now at least 16,000 samples of hair from different women inside the museum. But it gets even creepier still. A couple times a year, a random lock of hair is chosen, and that individual is invited back to the museum to stay in the guest house and have a workshop with the resident master potter, seeing as the pottery part of the house is still very much alive. Leave some hair and learn how to make pottery. Number 6. Corpse Eating Medicine Not so long ago, Europeans were cannibals, and I'm not talking about Neanderthals. For several hundred years, with the peak of cannibalism being in the 16th and 17th centuries, Europeans were consuming human flesh. These people weren't deranged either. They were royalty, people with the church, and even scientists. The reason is that doctors of the day were recommending medicinal remedies based on eating certain parts of the human body. Some of these body parts included human bones, internal fat, blood, and even Egyptian mummies. According to the Smithsonian, it all began when someone got the brilliant idea that an Egyptian mummy could be crumbled into a small container and then consumed to stop internal bleeding. It then became obvious that by crushing a skull into powder and consuming it, that it could cure a headache. There was even a drink created by a pioneer of brain science named Thomas Willis in the 17th century, in which he mixed human skull and chocolate to stop bleeding. Even King Charles II of England had his own special cocktail of human skull and alcohol to keep himself healthy. The cannibalism went on and on. Fresh skulls became extremely valuable and skulls became all the rage. The result is that grave robbers saw a huge boom in business as they began pillaging corpses and selling their body parts for the noble people of Europe to eat, all to get rid of their headaches and other ailments. Number 5. The Little Albert Experiment The Little Albert Experiment is one of the most horrifying psychology experiments ever conducted and is so shocking that viewer discretion is probably advised. The horrible experiment was conducted by a behaviorist named John B. Watson. He was interested in human conditioning and wanted to show that emotional reactions could be conditioned in human beings. He wanted to condition a child to be afraid of certain things. So he took baby Albert at only nine months old and exposed him to a whole bunch of random stimuli such as monkeys, burning newspapers, and rats to gauge his reactions. At first, the baby had no fear of anything that was shown to him. So Watson began to condition the fear. He would show the child something like a rat while making loud noises with a metal pipe and a hammer. The loud noise would frighten the child and make him cry, and so whenever the child saw the rat, he would naturally start crying. But here's what's really terrible about it. Watson took the child without his mother knowing and basically psychologically tortured him. To make things even worse, baby Albert was sick and died at the young age of six from fluid buildup in his brain. In other words, the experiment was basically just a doctor terrorizing a small sick child in secret without anyone's consent and making him scared of normal, everyday things. Number four. The Man With No Face There's an urban legend about a man with no face, but in fact, this is one urban legend that has its roots in reality. Raymond Robinson is also known as Charlie No Face, and he was a native of Pennsylvania. His legend spread in the 1950s and 60s, specifically in western Pennsylvania. The legend was about the Green Man, who stalked the streets at night without a face and terrorized young children. And while Raymond Robinson did live in Pennsylvania and probably went out at night sometimes, he didn't actually stalk kids. He was blind. By now, you're probably wondering how this guy had no face. 
It was 1919 and Raymond was only eight years old when he tried to reach into a bird's nest at the top of an electric pole. Instead of getting the eggs, he got 11,000 volts of electricity. The shock burnt his face clean off, leaving disgusting holes of melted skin where his eyes and nose had been before. As you can imagine, not having a face is not the greatest life to have. Raymond isolated himself in Pennsylvania in his family home and only left the house in the dead of night to avoid scaring the local townsfolk. But this is where the urban legend came from as high school kids used to see him walking along State Route 351, and they thought he was some kind of monster. But this is actually quite sad. Number three, Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch may be the creepiest place in all of the United States of America. The ranch is located in Northwest Utah in the Uinta Basin. Hundreds of years before America was the New World, the area was inhabited by the Navajo and the Ute. Then, during the Civil War, the Ute betrayed the Navajo when they allied themselves with Kit Carson to kick the Navajo out of their native lands. The betrayal resulted in the Navajo being forced to surrender and being carted off to a reservation. Ever since, the entire area has been cursed. Apparently, it was the Navajo who cursed the lands that were stolen from them in retaliation. Part of the curse was for the whole region to be haunted by skinwalkers, horrible creatures that cause nothing but trouble. In modern times, all kinds of weirdness has happened at Skinwalker Ranch, including cattle mutilations and UFO sightings. In 1994, the owner of the ranch, Terry Sherman, witnessed a wolf three times the size of any ordinary wolf trying to bite off a cow's head through the bars of its pen. Sherman shot the creature point blank, but it simply turned and walked away unharmed. Sherman would say later that the air where the creature had stood reeked of rotting flesh. Other humanoid creatures have been seen around too. Some of them have four legs, some walk upright as if they were human. UFOs have been spotted multiple times flying overhead. Then there are the cattle mutilations, in which cows went missing and were then discovered with certain organs removed with surgical precision, such as eyeballs removed from the sockets and reproductive organs harvested totally intact. So what's the truth of Skinwalker Ranch? Is it aliens, skinwalkers of legend, or just a crazy surgeon who likes cows? Number two, Doomsday Cult. In a remote, mostly forgotten and heavily wooded area of Philadelphia, there's a tunnel opening in the side of a hill that has a very disturbing and creepy past. The tunnel opening leads to a bunker that was once used by the first Doomsday Cult in America. They were called the Society of the Women in the Wilderness, and they were led by Johannes Kelpius, a Transylvanian born in the same town as the ruthless Vlad Tepes, aka Dracula. What did this doomsday cult do? The truth is that they didn't really do a lot of anything other than sit around and wait for the end of the world. The cult had about 40 monks and took shelter in the hillside back in 1694. The idea was to seek shelter in the wilderness and hide out from the incoming apocalypse. The cave here was chosen because of its proximity to fresh spring water and because it's located on the 40th parallel, with 40 being a sacred number to the monks. However, the end times never came. The group stayed in the forest, living in the cave far beyond when they had anticipated the end of the world to come. Maybe they were just too embarrassed to crawl out of the dark and face reality. It wasn't until 1708 that all the monks finally left and only after their leader had died. But the cave is still there today, abandoned for three centuries. Number one. Creepy Disney. Nobody knows where this picture came from. So far as anyone can tell, it came from some time in the 50s or 60s. It shows a group of friends who appear to be young children dressed in various Disney character masks. The kids are standing in a field. Behind them, an abandoned car is burning. This may have been taken on Halloween many years ago, but nobody really knows for sure. We have no idea who took the picture or where. It just simply appeared, and to this day, its creepy mystery has never been solved. Who were these kids and why did they pose for such a ghoulish photograph? We'll probably never know. Thanks for watching. What's your creepiest story? Feel free to tell me in the comments and if you enjoy the video, hit that subscribe button and come back again for more great content. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.